The shorthanded Colts are traveling north to take on the Minnesota Vikings this Saturday, but can they still win this thing? We'll talk about it here on Locked On Colts. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Colts fans, thank you for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering the Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I know this is a weird little Saturday episode we got going here, but you know the Colts are playing on Saturday, so I guess we have to kind of get weird with it. This is Zach Hicks, your usual co-host, joined by Andrew Moore of HorseshoeHuddle.com. He's filling in for Jake as Jake had some uh, fatherly duties <laughs> to do today. Uh, I think it's his kid's birthday on Saturday, so he's just mm-hmm. running around in circles. You know how those little kid birthdays are. You know, you have to you have to do so much there. But today, guys, Andrew and I are going to give a little bit of a preview to this Colts opponent. You know, the 10-3 and Vikings that they're playing this week, we're actually going to talk about the game for once. I know that uh, Jake and I haven't really been too interested in talking about these games just because – I don't think you guys are that interested in these games (laughs) at this point. Andrew kind of understands the sentiment there. So uh, Andrew and I are going to do our best to talk about this game, kind of what we're looking forward to and everything uh, for the Saturday game. But before we do that, we do have some, some, I guess some news ish. I mean, again, if you care about the game or not, well, I don't know. We'll say, but uh, for the Colts this week, they did rule out Kenny Moore, the second cornerback, Kenny Moore, the second, he is out this week. Wide receiver Mike Strawn is also going to be out. And then cornerback Brandon Faison has been downgraded from doubtful to out. He will not play on Saturday against the Vikings. Uh, so they're going to be a little bit thin at cornerback. But we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to our defensive segment. So first segment here, guys, we're going to talk about the Colts offense versus the Vikings defense. And again, because the Colts can be mathematically eliminated from the playoffs this week, it's hard to really say like, you know, give us your keys to the game or let's break this in depth because uh, again, the Colts have like a 99.9% chance of not making the playoffs this year. So we're just going to talk about things that we want to see from the Colts offense or from specific players on the Colts offense this week. So Andrew, the Colts are facing one of the worst defenses in all of football this week. What are you looking forward to uh, from this Colts offense that has been uh, uh, pretty ugly (laughs) this season? What are you looking forward to this weekend? Yeah, I was there down in Dallas seeing firsthand the implosion, and I think that's putting it lightly, of the fourth quarter of this Colts offense. Uh, really, I mean, it's it's it would be easy for me to say I want to see if Matt Ryan can rebound against the 32nd ranked pass defense in the entire NFL. But if I'm being honest, I'm not sure if he can. Just seeing how much his velocity has dipped and everything that's gone into it. What I'm really going to be watching probably from from now until the end of the season is really how these young guys play, how these rookies play. So I'm talking about namely of, as far as like the draft is concerned, because there's been a lot of talk if the Colts want to take a, an offensive tackle. I want to watch Bernard Raymond these last this last month of the season. I think he has started to come into his own. You've seen him over the past few weeks. He he isn't missing as many as many reps as he was he he seems like he belongs now it's just kind of that trial by fire is he's starting to finally calm down the game is starting to slow down a little bit for him so i want to see bernard raymond can continue that and show that the colts can really rely on him or at least have him in there as 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 a candidate for the left tackle position next year so i want to see bernard raymond on the offense side and then jelani woods i would really like to see jelani woods when healthy Get more, get more reps, get more action out there, whether it is in line as a blocker, which he really wasn't drafted to be, but really using that weapon that he can be in the slot. So whether that takes away snaps from Moali Cox and Kylan Granson, we'll see, but I'd love to see those two really shine on the season. Yeah, no, I love that shout out for Bernard Ryman, because that's a guy who a couple weeks ago, I wrote a film article for horseshoehuddle.com where I was saying, look, there's something there with him. Like he is, he can be a good player. But I thought it was just going to be really rough the rest of the season. I thought it was going to be ugly. His anchor is just not where it needs to be. 
his arm length is definitely showing up. His footwork is not there. You know, he doesn't have the things to mitigate his flaws. But we've kind of seen the last couple of weeks since since I wrote that article. It's I guess he read the article and and was like, <laughs> man, I gotta I gotta show this guy up because the last couple of weeks he's been pretty good. Like, yes, the anchor concern is still there. I I do think that that's some, an area where he's gonna need a lot of work this off season. But we have seen a new Bernard Ryman of late, a guy where. Yes, he hasn't been like a top tier tackle, but he's been pretty solid, which is all you can really ask out of a, a rookie offensive tackle in this league. So yeah, I love that shout out for Bernard Ryman, and then obviously Jelani Woods. You just, I mean, I want to see him with hundred percent snaps going forward. I know he might get a little tired, but he's he's a kid. Throw him out there uh, because I, I just don't see the upside in playing Molly Cox over him. So I love that. I'll add one more guy to that. The one more guy that I want to see is Alec Pierce. Uh, again, 32nd ranked uh, pass defense according to DVOA this week against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they have just been downright awful in recent mm-hmm. weeks. You know, uh, I was talking to Matthew Collier um, earlier this week on his podcast, on his Vikings podcast, and he was saying, like, look, they're playing off man coverage in the red zone or something, or they're playing off man coverage against these teams that can't beat you deep. So you're just giving up all these underneath throws and and these short passes. And I'm like, great, that's what Matt Ryan can actually do. So maybe. We can get some slants. We can get some drag going to, to Alec Pierce, get him going. I want to see him get, you know, 500, 600 yards this season. Get, it's just a really solid rookie season going for him. Uh, so, yeah, Alec Pierce is a guy that I want to keep seeing. Uh, but, yeah, one more thing I want to kind of throw on to this here is, look, I know Matt Ryan has been getting crapped on a lot this season, for lack of a better term. Uh, and, Much of and it by me so. in what, I've, in what yeah. I've written about him. Yeah, so. rightfully so. Rightfully so. I mean, he started off the year kind of skittish, and it's just regressed to a point of just not great. Um, and while a loss probably helps the Colts long term more this weekend, I do want to see Matt Ryan step back or just come back from what happened in Dallas because, look, we're talking about a fringe Hall of Fame quarterback. I want to see him finish this year strong, even if, you know, again, you'd rather see the Colts lose for draft position these last four weeks. I want to see him end up like end his career on a higher note or like on a better note than what that Dallas game was. Cause again, we're talking about a guy where, you know, you talk about the story of the NFL and all those hall of fame narratives and stuff like that. This is an MVP, a former MVP, one of the better MVP seasons we've ever seen in the history of this league. The really good quarterback uh, did a lot of great things for the Falcons. And while this whole Colts thing just did not work out for him, I do want to see him kind of have a better send off than, some other guys that we've seen, like you know Ben Roethlisberger, the way he completely fell off, and it just got worse and worse. Uh, Peyton Manning, even though he won a Super Bowl, just did not look like Peyton Manning at all. I want to see Matt Ryan kind of bounce back a little bit uh, to end off his career, if this truly is the end of his career. But uh, yeah, for this weekend, I really want to see Alec Pierce have a big game, and I just want to see Matt Ryan just for just for the football fan that I am. I want to see Matt Ryan kind of bounce back from what happened there in Dallas. Yeah, I would agree. And and for everything that has happened this year in Indianapolis, you can talk about Matt Ryan's on-field performance all you want, but with how everything has gone down, Matt Ryan has handled everything with pure class this year. He has never thrown a single teammate or coach under the bus. He, anytime that he has been pressured on anything, he's always taken the high road. And And as Frank Reich even said way back weeks ago before he was fired, This wasn't what Matt Ryan was promised. He was promised a top flight offensive line and an explosive running game. Neither of those has has really been there for Matt Ryan all season. So again, yeah, you would like to see him bounce back. And I think after a bye week where he's able to kind of decompress for a little bit, another week where that shoulder, because it probably is still bothering him, gets a little bit better. And you're going up against the worst pass defense in the NFL this season. There's no better opportunity for Matt Ryan to to just boost his confidence a little bit going into the last month of the season. Absolutely, absolutely. And guys, we're going to talk about this Colts defense coming up and talk about what we're hoping to see against this very good Vikings offense. But first, this episode is brought to you by Tommy John. Don't make your loved ones face the dead of winter in old t-shirts, ancient underwear, and ratty sweats. Help them fight off the cold with, with the cozy. Give them the gift of Tommy John. And Tommy John, you're much more comfortable, so you can do everything better. Shop Tommy John's Wrap It Up sale right now and give the gift of comfort to everyone on your list, including yourself with new Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. With over 18 million pairs sold, giving Tommy John's giving Tommy John's has become a holiday tradition. 97% of women and men love getting a gift from Tommy John. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. 
they have fanatics. Since I work from home for two out of my three jobs, and you know Andrew can probably attest to this as well, I'm in sweats quite a bit. I love me some sweats. I'm just always going to be in sweats. So Tommy John makes some very comfortable one, guys, and, and I really think you guys need to try these out. Every gift is backed by Tommy John's best hair you'll ever wear, or it's free, guaranteed. You just can't get better than that, guys. Hurry to Tommy John's Wrap It Up sale and get 30% off everything, plus free shipping at TommyJohn.com slash locked on. Order now so your gifts arrive before the holidays. 30% off plus free shipping at TommyJohn.com slash locked on. TommyJohn.com slash locked on. See the site for details. All right, Andrew, let's talk about this defense where, yes, this defense has uh, has fallen off a little bit in recent weeks. Uh, but still, I don't think you could find any Colts fan unless they're just being very pessimistic and angry that could say that Gus Bradley's unit has been a disappointment this season. The Colts defense has played fairly well despite having some injuries, not having their superstar linebacker for pretty much the entire season, uh, having a completely new staff and a completely new system. They've played very well this season, but they're going against uh, the Minnesota Vikings this week. Kirk Cousins, who is a pretty solid quarterback, and then Justin Jefferson, who is arguably the best wide receiver in all of football. What are you looking for this week from this Colts defense? I'm really looking forward to a couple of things, really. Uh, the, the secondary for the Colts, as we talked about earlier, it's pretty banged up. I mean, Kenny Moore the second is out. Brandon Faison was downgraded to out today. So you're going to see a lot more of Isaiah Rogers, which I think you and I both big fans of. Uh, we're, we're, we we want to see him out there as much as possible. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this Vikings, how Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings offense really move Justin Jefferson around. Uh, the, because they really don't keep him over on the right side, left side, in the slot. He's all over the place. They try to give him the best matchup possible. So you can expect Stephon Gilmore to be in his normal role, Isaiah Rogers to be on the other side. But for slot corner, what the Colts did against the Cowboys, they brought Ju safety Julian Blackman, who has experience playing corner at the University of Utah, brought him down and he played the slot for most of the game. So uh, my guess would be that's what's going to happen again on Saturday against the Vikings. Julian Blackwood's going to be in the slot. We're going to see if, if the Vikings try to take advantage of that or Blackman can show that he can still play that corner position because uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I could see a scenario where Blackman moves to corner next year if they decide to cut trade a certain slot cornerback when they got a young <laughs> Rodney Thomas the second and Nick Cross there at safety who knows I'm getting ahead of myself but I think it's going to be interesting to see how this Colts secondary adapts and 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 is able to change to defend Justin Jefferson Adam Thielen TJ Hawkinson the myriad of weapons that the Vikings have Shame on you, Andrew. You're trying to get into some off-season content here. We are talking <laughs> Vikings and Colts on this episode. We are not talking off-season content. But I, I love everything you had to say there, Andrew. And that was going to be my my thing. You know, Isaiah Rogers Sr. We are finally going to see him as a starter, and he's probably going to play a majority of snaps. And mm -hmm. uh, the only other guy I could see really getting out there at outside corner is young cornerback Dallas Flowers, which I'd also be pretty excited to see. I just want to see him out there because he's a really intriguing athletic young corner who kind of reminds me of Isaiah Rogers senior from a couple years ago. Uh, so I love that Andrew. And now you're making me have to think on the spot about a new thing to talk about, which means I'm going to talk about these young pass rushers. I don't care about Yannick Ngakwe. I don't care about DeForest Buckner the rest of the season, Dio Adangbo and Quiddy Pay. That's what it's all about. I just want to see if these two can kind of keep up their play of late where Quiddy Pay early in the season played really well. He looked like he was a perfect fit in Gus Bradley's system suffered that injury and it's kind of just been a little inconsistent since then which is is notable i mean again this is the guy with uh an ankle injury a super athletic player so he's probably still trying to work back from that ankle injury uh so i'm not too too concerned about him going forward uh he has been the colts best pass rusher especially on you know stunts and and twists and just again fitting in this gus bradley scheme uh, so i want to see him continue what he's doing but dio adangbo man we really couldn't talk about the positives too much last week because that Cowboys game was just a bloodbath, especially in that fourth quarter. But Dio Dangbo had this one rep against Zach Martin. And again, Zach Martin, I think if you're talking about the history of the NFL, if you're talking about guards in NFL history, Zach Martin's probably in what the top three 
top five. I would agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like this is a guy who's been an all pro like every year of his career. Uh, consistency is key with him, and it's been consistent at the, the top level of the sport. And Dio Adambo walked him back into Dak Prescott's face on that. I know it's just one snap. I know it's one snap, but we're talking about what a 21 year old pass rusher in his second year, basically his first year because he didn't really play much last year. He walked one of the all time greats into into the quarterback's face and forced a pressure throw away. I mean, I, that right there, I was like, oh my gosh! Like all my all my bad thoughts about Dio Dambo, maybe being a bust, maybe being a reach. I was like, holy crap! There it is. I don't care about the rest. He's now a hit just because he did that. But honestly, <laughs> though, I want to see him continue that. I mean, the, we're going against the Minnesota Vikings this week, who have one of the weaker interior offensive lines in the NFC. Uh, Garrett Bradbury's been up and down like usual. Ezra Cleveland again, up and down player. The player that they're starting at right guard over. Chris Reed has not been very good. The most pressures allowed in all of football. This is where Dio Adangbo can have that breakout. I don't care about the result of this game. I don't care if the Colts win or lose. I want to see these young players step up. And Dio Adangbo has a key chance against an interior offensive line that just hasn't been that good against a quarterback that struggles versus pressure. And he's coming off of a good game against Zach Martin. I think Dio Adangbo is one of the biggest storylines for this game here, Andrew. You're going to see a lot of Dio Dangbo on third downs. Uh, I mean, he's going to be rushing from that interior. And, and Kirk Cousins, I mean, we talk about we talk about the Vikings, their 10 and 3 record, but Kirk Cousins has been sacked 33 times this year. That's eighth most in the NFL. So if you can get pressure, especially up the middle, like you were talking about, I mean, his passer rating drops dramatically. So you Dio Dangbo is going to be huge. I like what you said about Quiddy Pay, and uh, Quiddy Pay got off to a really good start this year, and I think he was he was on pace for double digit sacks. And I think right. he would have gotten yeah. there without the ankle injury. And when you're a pass rusher, those ankle Achilles, those lower body injuries, when you're putting so much torque on your body, so much of of your success is predicated on explosiveness. That's going to set you back a little bit. And and with Quiddy Pay starting to get his that ankle back underneath him we saw he was the only one to register a sack against the dallas cowboys and and bring dak prescott down so i I, i'm again i'm really excited for quitty pay and if he can just stay healthy i think he can reach that eight nine sack season and then really double his production from last year but yeah you're absolutely right dio dangbo we we always talk about how it normally takes pass rushers a year and then they had that huge jump year two Dio's reaching that 15, 16 game mark because of his Achilles injury last year. So we're kind of seeing right before our eyes him getting to that that second quote unquote season worth of games. And you're really starting to see him put together more consistent games and, and more consistent pressure throughout the game. So, yeah, absolutely. Those two pass rushers going to be going to be key. And I think a lot of Colts fans need to keep an eye on those two come Saturday afternoon. Definitely, man. Definitely. Guys, we're going to talk about our final predictions and thoughts about, again, a game that we have to watch. So we have to watch a game here on Saturday, but we're going to talk about that here in a second. But before we move on, we want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Total Wine and More. This holiday season, find what you love at Total Wine and More with so many great bottles to choose from. It's easy to find a new favorite Cabernet or Chardonnay. I hope I said those words right. I'm not the biggest wine drinker, but those sound right to me. Or the perfect guest for everyone at your li- on your list with some help from Friendly Guide. And with all the confidence of knowing that you found a special for the lowest price. Again, guys, I'm not the biggest wine drinker, but you can find so many different drinks there. And, and for someone like me who, you know, I like I like to drink a little bit on Friday nights and stuff. It's a Friday night. You guys can tell I'm a little crazy right now. It's because I'm going to be drinking later. I'm excited. <laughs> you guys can go to Total Wine and More. Love what you find. Only at Total Wine and more. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com and learn more. Drink responsibility. And Andrew, B21. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorites right there. I love I love Total Wine and more. I just love that final line so much. B21. B21. B21 or older. Or older. We'll, we'll be inclusive here on this right. episode. Or I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to go back to what I was at 21. <laughs> I was pretty uh, reckless, to say the least, at that age. <laughs> I wasn't going reckless. I was just, uh, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll move on from that. Let's go to our segment, our final segment. Talk about our thoughts and predictions on Colts Vikings. Earlier in the season, we probably would have said this would have been a huge game for the Colts to and their rush to the playoffs. Now it's looking like a, a huge game for the Colts and their rush to 
you know, CJ Stroud or Anthony Richardson. So Andrew, <laughs> what are, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions? How do you think this game is going to go on Saturday? Yeah, I think this game, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. I really do. Yeah. The last, it's crazy to think the last time the Colts played at U.S. Bank Stadium was in 2016 when number 12 was back there at quarterback. And I was there in attendance, believe it or not. But it's it's going to be a closer game. I think the spread earlier in the week was four points. Uh, and I think it's going to be a close game because I think the Colts defense is going to keep them in it. I really do. Combine that with the fact that that this Vikings defense, the pass defense isn't isn't nearly as good as what the Colts have faced recently and and it could get Matt Ryan back on track um, however the the Vikings are just playing for too much right now uh, they they had a chance to clinch the NFC North last week against the Lions didn't do that they see this opportunity against a struggling Colts team and and they I think they know that they need to step on their throat and get this job done so uh, I think it's going to be a close game Again, it's probably going to be the first team to 20 because the Colts can't score over 20 <laughs> points. I think they've done it two or three times all season. Uh, but I, I think the, I think it's going to be a close game, but I got to give the edge to the Vikings. So if I had to put a score on it, I'd probably say Vikings 23, Colts 20. Yeah, I like that because, look, the Minnesota Vikings are the better football team. They have more explosive talent, especially on offense. They have – better coaching they're they're closing out games much better than the than indianapolis colts but the indianapolis colts love to make us miserable when we're rooting for losses <laughs> they love to just ruin that draft position and take us away from the top quarterbacks they did it in 2019 you know naeem hines returns two punts for a touchdown against the carolina panthers takes us out of you know the justin justin herbert you know sweepstakes and all that stuff and and we end up trading it for DeForest Buckner, and the rest is history. It's just what the Colts do. And I'm looking at this game, and I think they're going against a team with a terrible defense. And what are the two games this season where the Indianapolis Colts offense actually did anything? Against the Las Vegas Raiders, who were the 32nd-ranked defense at the time, and against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who were, I think were like a bottom-four defense at the mm -hmm. time in that game, the second matchup. Those are the games that the Colts offense actually look like an NFL offense. Now they're coming off the bye week. They're going against this terrible defense that just cannot do anything right. Uh, I'm not saying this Colts offense is a juggernaut or going to do something great, but it's in the cards where they could be kind of productive this week. And then you just look at some other factors. You know, this Vikings offense is so explosive. You know, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook. What's something that this Colts defense, for the most part this season, has been great at? Limiting those explosive plays. That's just what they've been very good at this season. I think I think they're bottom eight in the NFL in explosive plays allowed, or top eight, however you want to look at that metric. Uh, and that's with Gus Bradley and that single high defense that's not very popular right now because the Colts just understand how to limit those big plays, how to keep uh, those big plays down to a minimum, even though, it, again, it has been kind of a regression this past couple of weeks. I just think... This Colts team matches up with this Vikings team. And if the Colts were in the playoff hunt, I'd be like, cool. I think they could win this game, and I think this will be great for them. But I'm going to say I think they win this game, and it's going to be bad for them because they're going to hurt that draft position. I think they're going to win 28-24, to 24, and we're going to have people calling Jeff Saturday coach of the year and the coach of the future <laughs> after this one. Uh, but, yeah, no, I really do think this is a, just the type of team and the type of game that the Colts can win as long as, again, just big stipulation, as long as their defense does not look like they did in that fourth quarter of that Cowboys game. If that was an aberration, if that was just them being worn out in that one game rather than just worn out from the whole season, then I think they win this game. If the defense you know, allows some points early, allows the Vikings to go right down their throat a couple times early in the game, then I think it's time to call it wraps on this season. But I do think, again, this Vikings team, they're 91 in one-score games this season. They've kind of just been a, just a lucky coin flip team for most of the year, where the Colts have kind of been an average coin flip team. I think this is a game the Colts can win, and like, I think it's a game they will win because they hate, the, they hate our draft position talks. They hate our Anthony Richardson and C.J. Stroud debates. Uh, they hate our, our head coaching debates. They want Jeff Saturday – plus a veteran next season. So I, I, I think the Colts end up pulling this one off, but it wouldn't shock me either way with the result in this game. I think the Vikings are a little bit 
overperforming, a little bit overperforming. Mm-hmm. The Colts are underperforming, so I think it might come a little even this weekend. But uh, yeah, 28-24, Indianapolis Colts with a victory. My first victory prediction in weeks. Here we go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since I predicted a victory, too. Uh, I think I, I said they might sneak one out against Pittsburgh, but right. that one that one didn't do too well. But <laughs> I, I, I everything you said was was correct because the, the Colts are always – the, t- the games they're not supposed to win or you think it's gonna it's not gonna go their way they always they always play up to the opponent it seems like or most of the time yeah. uh, i just i just think that on the road uh, and the way that things have been going it, it's there's just something in my mind that says it's going to come down to a late turnover by matt ryan whether it's a fumble lost on on a play where bernard raymond gets blown up or or ryan kelly gets blown up or it's going to be an interception because he doesn't have enough velocity to drive the ball. It's something I just feel like a late turnover is going to hurt the Colts. The Colts defense will keep a minute, but we'll see if they can actually win the game because I think while this Colts offense is, has a good matchup, I still think it's going to be on the defense to really to really pull this one out on Saturday. Andrew coming on the podcast with his hot takes, thinking that the quarterback with the most <laughs> interceptions and the most fumbles this season is going to have a backbreaking turnover in the fourth quarter. Andrew, come on, bring, bring some some hot take analysis. Here, here's one. I got I got a fun hot take because we got a little bit of time. Isaiah Rogers' first pick of the season coming up this week. Love like, that. It has, it has to. It has mm-hmm. to. Like he he is eager for one. He wants one so bad. He. I think he likes playing solid cornerback play. I think, like, I think he likes being a solid corner that people don't want to target, but I think it irks him a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it yeah. irks him. I think he wants that pick. He's a playmaker at heart. Uh, so yeah, I definitely think that he's going to be. Uh, he's going to get that first pick of the season this year. But Andrew, give me a hot take from this game. Come on, don't, don't give me oh, some Matt man. Ryan. Like a like a stuff. like a bold a bold prediction. I would say, let's 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 do this. I think Michael Pittman Jr. is going to double his. T- touchdown production from this season i think he's gonna go from two to four <laughs> because i think i think that that the colts will score through the air i will give you that but and and why why not be michael Pittman jr because i mean ashton doolin got in it got in on the fun two weeks ago so did alec pierce i think Pittman needs a couple touchdowns and i, I think against this against this struggling pass defense hey wh- why couldn't it be Pittman? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's root for the best of both worlds, guys. For all you guys that want to see this Colts offense scoring, let's say they put up 60 tomorrow or today, whenever <laughs> you guys are listening. But for all you guys rooting for draft position, let's hope the Vikings put up 70. Let's just hope for some fun, guys. <laughs> so that's it for us, everyone. We'll be back with you guys after the game tomorrow to break down all the action. Uh, make sure you guys are following us on social media at Andrew Moore NFL, at Locked On Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks, too. We'll be live tweeting during the game tomorrow probably miserably, but it'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> also subscribe to the Locked On Colts podcast on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, we'd also love your ratings, reviews, if you guys enjoyed this. And make sure you give a shout out to Andrew for jumping on today and filling in for Jake. Thank you guys for making us your first listen of the day. And for your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow after the game.